Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how I wash my mare's tail who has a super thick tail, whether I'm washing their tails or their bodies. You always want to run the water on their feet and their legs and just let it run there and let them get adjusted to the temperature of the water. And then I like to work my way up from the feet to the legs to the rump. And if you want to make it really comfortable for them, make sure that you check the water often. And I actually have this hose hooked to our bathtub in the house so I can have warm water with the cold water. Even though it's a hot day, the water does tend to come out cold and it can make it more uncomfortable for them. So if you really want to make it comfortable, if you have the option, use warm water. My hose is hooked up to our bathtub in the house, so I have warm water. This time when I washed her tail, I washed her rump and her girly parts too, which I do have a video that I already put together for the girly parts. I'll put the link above. And this is my little jelly scrubber. So if you don't have time to wash their whole bodies, I think every once in a while when you do their tails, it's a good idea to do their rumps too. Just make sure it's clean so they don't want to rub. Anytime that you wash them, whether it's their bodies, rumps, tails, manes, whatever it is that you wash, just make sure that you rinse them really well so you get all the soap out because if you don't get all the soap out, that can create dryness and make them itchy and want to rub. So just make sure that you always rinse them really well. Now onto the tail. With her tail, because it's so thick, I use a lot of shampoo because I like to get the shampoo all the way down to her bone so I get her tailbone really clean so it doesn't feel dirty and itchy and make her want to rub and because her tail is so thick she has so many hairs it's hard to get all of her hairs with just a little bit of shampoo so yeah I just pour it on and rub it in and then I add some water and I just make sure I get all the hairs from the top all the way to her tailbone. And actually since this video, I've come up with something that helps me to really saturate her tail with the shampoo. And I even did it with the conditioner the last time too. So I'll show you guys that the next time I wash her tail. It worked really, really good and it's gonna save me some money because I don't have to use as much shampoo and conditioner. Now I'm going to focus on the lower part of her tail. Once I get the shampoo all over her tail, I work it in really well. Baby's saying, are you done yet? And now time to rinse it out. Now that it's rinsed really well, time for the conditioner. I really like to rub it in and make sure I get the conditioner on all of her hairs because especially out in Nevada in this dry heat, dry weather, their tails just get so dry and brittle, so I really like to make sure that I get the conditioner throughout the whole tail. I just keep rubbing to make sure that, that all the tail hairs are covered. And like I said, since the last time I tried something new with the conditioner and actually the, the shampoo too for the lower part of her tail, that helps a lot because her tail is just so thick and it's hard to get her whole tail saturated so I tried something new and it seemed to work really well. One, it'll save time and two, it'll save 
a little bit of money from using so much product. This way is fine for some of my other horses that have a thinner tail because it's just easier to get their whole tail saturated with either the shampoo or the conditioner. But like I said with her tail because it's so thick, this new way that I tried really worked well and I'll be making a video on that so watch for that coming pretty soon. Once I have the conditioner worked all the way through her tail, I go back up to the upper part and just massage it in just a little bit more before I rinse it. This was the Cowboy Magic Rosewater Conditioner. Once you have that applied, then make sure you rub it in really good. This helps to detangle and condition. And now for the Shoshin. I like to spray the Shoshin on their tails while they're wet and I just spray it all throughout the tail. And I used to use Shoshin more often and comb their tails more often, but I'm finding that Shoshin can be drying to their tails and makes them more brittle. Also, you want to resist combing out their tails a whole lot, especially if they're thick. The only times I really use Shoshin anymore is when they get baths. So once I've washed them and conditioned them and rinsed everything out, then while the tail's wet, I like to spray the Shoshin all throughout the tail. Let it sit for about 30 to 40 minutes or so until the tail's dry. And then I like to comb the tail out while it's dry. For Chansey though, when I use just the Lucky Braid shampoo, which I was just using that last year, no Shoshin, just the Lucky Braids. With the Lucky Braids, you are supposed to comb out their tails while they're wet. And I do have a couple videos on that, I'll post below in the description. But with her tail, because it's so thick, I like to use the Shoshin. And it's almost impossible to get her tail combed out wet with just the Lucky Braids, so she needs the conditioner and the Shoshin. And a lot of times after it's dried, I'll come back and maybe add just a little bit more before I comb it out, just so it makes it easier to comb out. This video is getting really long, and if you've watched it this far, I really, really appreciate it. So since it's so long, I'm going to make a separate video of the way that I comb her tail out. It's a way that I found that makes it so much easier. I used to dread combing her tail out, but I found a way that makes it so much easier where I don't dread it and it actually goes really fast and it's not that bad. So watch for that video. That'll be coming soon. Thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.